That airplane is a C-141. It's one of a fleet of Air Force jets assigned to the Military Airlift Command. Right now, its job is to bring wounded and ill servicemen home from Vietnam or anywhere else they're stationed. Now, that's quite an assignment. This jet and others like it have seen the airfields of Japan, Hawaii, the Philippines, Alaska, and of course, Tanzanut in Vietnam. Home bases here in the United States are uh, Travis Air Force Base right outside of San Francisco, uh, Scott Air Force Base in Illinois, and Andrews Air Force Base right here in Maryland. Now, every, everywhere these jets go, they're met by flight technicians and nurses and fuel trucks and a very, very special group of people. I'm talking about the American Red Cross volunteers. These women are at work all over the world to bring comfort and a word of encouragement to wounded GIs. And that's what this film's about. The American servicemen who fly home on these jets and the American Red Cross volunteers who meet them. This fellow was wounded in Vietnam. He's recuperating now at Walter Reed Hospital in Washington. Looks like he's spending his time building model planes. He's Army Sergeant Irvin Dane. I had almost 11 and a half months in, in Vietnam, and I had received orders for Germany, I believe it was. And upon your receipt of orders, you ordinarily you pack up your baggage and stick a copy of your orders in it and ship your, ship your baggage home. And that is what I was in the process of doing. I had my, my whole baggage packed up, along with tape recorder and amplifier that I'd just purchased. And this was all crated up in the back of a truck, and myself and two of my men were on our way back to Cameron to ship my whole baggage home. We got ambushed on the way, on the way to Cameron. And the last thing I remember was uh, a chopper flying in to pick me out and Eddie back. The choppers land at evacuation hospitals throughout Vietnam. Some of the men can walk, and some can't. Here, the Red Cross supplies needed toilet articles to the men who have come from the field with nothing. After emergency care is given, it's on to the big jets for the trip home. I remember uh, just about everywhere we landed on the way home. We landed in uh, Japan, landed in Alaska, and then finally here at Walter Reed, or at uh, Andrews Air Force Base. Everywhere we touched down, Red Cross girls were, were there to meet the plane, and they came on the plane, and anyone that couldn't get off, anyone was in stretches, like myself, they had Red Cross girls there to offer them donuts or a coffee or tea or whatever we wanted. And that was, that was refreshing, I think, because there was 26 hours on the plane all the way, and those little stops that we had were beneficial, I think. Andrews Air Force Base is the end of the line for this flight. Here the men leave the plane for an overnight stay before being transferred to hospitals near their homes. A short ride in an ambulance, and the men arrive at the 10th Casualty Staging Flight Hospital, better known as the Ponderosa. Here they find clean beds, top flight medical care, good food, and again, the Red Cross. Mrs. Grace Bissell has been a volunteer since 1963 and she explains how the volunteer program at Andrews works. You know in advance that you're working on, say, the 20th of the month. Uh, that particular day, you're on call from 12 noon on. 
the uh, captain of the team gets the call from the staff worker, Red Cross staff worker, uh, as to what time the flight is coming in. We allow anywhere, depending on the number of patients, number of litter patients, we allow anywhere from a half to three quarters of an hour before the team arrives at the Ponderosa, before she goes to work. Two pages. We've got, yeah, we've got 13, um, We've got 13 litter and... The women who volunteer to work in the Red Cross Medivac program do it in spite of very busy personal schedules. Mrs. Bonnie Davis is one. My personal day today, it's been busy. I was up early, uh, saw my husband off to work, saw that my daughter was taken care of by a, a neighbor. I left at 8 o'clock to go to Walter Reed to be with my son, who's having surgery this morning. I found him sound asleep. <laughs> he was asleep the whole time I was there. I quickly got in the car and, and uh, drove the distance from Walter Reed back here. When I reported in here, I reported to my team captain. I assisted her in making out our slips, like this, that uh, carry the patient's name, their rank, their ward number, their bed number, and the date. These are uh, prepared ahead of time. And then uh, we put them out at the foot of the bed of the patient's. After the patients are in and settled in their beds, then we go to each one of them and, and get their, who they're calling, whether it's brother, sister, parent, or wife, or relative, get their name and address and their phone number and start to call for them. The Red Cross gives each wounded serviceman returning from Vietnam a free phone call home. And this call is often the first time the man has talked to his family since leaving the States. Operator, this is Ms. Barrett with the American Red Cross. May I place a credit card call, please? Person to person to a Ms. Eva Chandler. The area code is 205-420-9813. Ms. Chandler, we have your son, Randall here at Andrews Air Force Base outside of Washington, D.C. And this is a courtesy call from the American Red Cross, and here's your son. Hello, Mom. Who's that? Hey, how you doing? I didn't know you was going to be there. <laughs> but <laughs> when did you get there? Last Friday. The school out? Oh, brother. Well, this is a surprise. I ain't joking. Oh, yeah. Couldn't be better. It's back home now. The Red Cross gave me a phone call here. So real good of them. I'm looking forward to some of them pinto beans. Real good. A big old bowl of pinto beans and cornbread waiting for me. A piece of onion, yeah. Every real fine. The phone calls are pretty popular, all right. And so are the refreshments and the comfort articles the volunteers distribute. these Red Cross volunteers do is personally rewarding to them and really appreciated by the servicemen. Well, they were all very cheerful. I mean, it was an overflowing type of, of friendliness that uh, regardless of the mood that you were in, regardless of how awful you felt, you just couldn't help but feel better just by seeing them. And uh, that's, that's the one thing that impressed me so much about them is I know they must have long hours and they come out in the middle of the night to greet an airplane and still be cheerful about it. It's very impressive to me. Well, that's our story, except for one thing. In order to continue its work in Arivac, 
and all its other programs, the Red Cross needs your continued support. So please, please help us help. <laughs>